This was one of 100 of this particular type that was owned by the War Department, but uh, they never saw service. Um, a previous owner in preservation was the NTET president, that's the Traction Engine Trust president, Andrew Semple. As I say, it's now with... Those little steam tractors, the first two we've had just had round the arena, they were used on sort of light haulage duties. Quinn and Porter at Rochester in Kent. This is a 1925 example that went new to Clacton Urban District Council in Essex. Uh, it's been with the current owner, Alex Baker of Ripley in Derbyshire for a number of years now. Enabling and Porter steam tractor this time. This one's owned by Jeff and Janet Lamb from Trowell in Nottinghamshire. Uh, it, went, it was one of three that were new to Herefordshire County Council. In 1997, Jeff and Janet Lamb. And uh, in the ownership of Jesse Vine in Gloucestershire, and it moved to a gentleman called Jack Hardy up in Sherbourne and Albert in, in Yorkshire. Uh, it's uh, been with the current owner in 1997, Jeff and Janet Lamb. Little Foster. Blue engine was built by Fowlers of Leeds. Uh, these were used on agricultural work, threshing, wood sawing, or that kind of work, going from farm to farm. This one was uh, purchased from a sale as a kit of parts uh, and has meticulously been put back together. It's believed to be one of the first Foster Wellington type tractors to be built, 1904 example. Following on behind that we have Stuart and Hazel Tomlinson from Hinkley with a big, this big blue engine which was built by Fowlers as Leeds. Uh, these were used on agricultural work, threshing, wood sawing or that kind of work, going from farm to farm. Yeah, <laughs> Stuart shouting at me again, goodness me. Uh, this one went new into Gloucestershire by a gentleman called Lawrence Faulkner. It came into preservation in the early 1960s with a gentleman. Upon Ted and Elsa, his wife's passing, Stuart became the owner of this particular engine. And it actually carries the name of Ted's wife, Elsa. A big Fowler road locomotive now. These big black engine just coming into the arena. Uh, built by Fowlers of Leeds. 15462, the maker's number. It went new to Packers of Chelsea in uh, Hampshire. Uh, it's now owned by Steve Arrowsmith from Bart under Neville. And it's now owned by Arthur Henton from Norton Juxta to Icross on the Leicestershire Warwickshire border. An engine with quite a lot of age to it, following on, it's a McLaren traction engine, McLaren built their engines at Leeds. Uh, 1882 example, works number 127, it went new to Dalgetty Estates in... This is a 1912 example, it went new to a Mr Hobden in Sussex. Uh, preserved, first preserved in Oxfordshire, and it's now with Alan Eaton of Creighton near Northampton. 1908 Marshall Traction Engine, also owned by Alan Eaton. This one goes served in Oxfordshire, and it's now with Alan Eaton of Creton near Northampton. 1908 Marshall Traction Engine, also owned by Alan Eaton. This one goes under the name of Moonlight Rambler. We'll perhaps see some moonlight rambling tonight, will we?
This one has the works numbers of 4922 and it went new to Tom Stamp of Linwood near Market Raisin. Uh, for part of the Tom Paisley collection, uh, of Tom Paisley was a well-known preservationist, uh, sadly passed away in the late 1970s and it was acquired from his sale in October 1980 by a firm called Park Holland from Stoke-on-Trent. As I say, it's now with Alan Eaton from Crete. Uh, <laughs> I need mean, the largest of the engines here on display this weekend, the, the Fowler ploughing engines. Fowler's built various types of uh, ploughing engines, all, all different, uh, like your cars, like a Ford Fiesta, Ford Escort, Ford Granada. This is a Fowler BB1 ploughing engine called Achilles. It's one of a pair that were built in order of the Ministry of Munitions and supplied to Watson and Hague of Andover. Uh, it then passed to the Honourable B. Butler Henderson in Hampshire and it's also been owned by first spell by Bonford and Evershed in Hampshire. It's currently owned by Mr. J. Um, when you see this particular engine, if you turn it to the right, you move to the left, and if you turn it to the left, you go to the right. Well, you've got to have your wits about it, and I know it's a bit dodgy, a bit dodgy but uh, we have known to have people throwing off the uh, footplate tender steering, but. We don't want that to happen, do we? But, uh, yeah, 1874 Bill. This is one of a pair that worked for BB Brothers. It's been with the Hammond family now since 1947. The Essex, before it moved into Lincolnshire, and Mr. Butler. It's been with the Hammond family since the 1940s. And it's only looking for a very rare appearance. We're from Redhill at Nottingham. Um, this one went new to a Mr. Finch in Essex before it moved into Lincolnshire and a Mr. Butler. Uh, it's been with the Hammond family since the 1940s and it's having what you call a very rare appearance at a steam engine rally, so we're very pleased to have that engine with us this weekend. Now we have Sparky with one of Alma Fleer's pair of flowing engines here this weekend. Uh, this one went new to wards of Carrington Grange. It was built by Fowlers. Uh, it worked right up until 1947. And uh, these engines are big engines and they are great lumps to move about on low loaders. So we're very pleased to have such a good turnout of ploughing engines here at Remston Steam and Country Show this weekend. Now we have Alma Flair's other ploughing engine, the AA7 type engine. This one went new to Lord Rayleigh's estates in Essex. Stuart's driving it for us this weekend. Uh, it was later owned by Dr Coombs in Bedfordshire and others of Stourbridge. If you've uh, been around the rallies for a long time, you'll perhaps remember this one when it was painted yellow and red when it was owned by Alan Tingey from Shackerston. So that's a Garrett steam tractor. Garrett's built their engines at Lyston in Suffolk. Uh, it's owned by David Bosworth of Brackley Gate in Derbyshire. And I know that it had a nice run of about 10 or 12 miles yesterday on the road from uh, Elveston Castle Rally. Foster Showman's engine now owned by Anthony and Wendy Thompson from West Bridgeford. 1926 example engine into a showman's engine that was around the late 1980s and it's been a, a, a regular round rally scene since then around the east midlands foster showman's engine 1456 4 of 1926 hutchinson engineering services with a, a burrell single crank compound showman's tractor this one uh, was actually built as a steamroller and it worked for Isaac Ball. Many years in preservation called Anthony Myers from Leeds. Uh, it actually stood here, not too far from here, for many years at Mount Mowbray. So it's good to see it back out again with Hutchinson Engineering Services of Sutton-on-Trent. 
a borough called Outlaw. Hi up now then. Team Mill Band from just down the road at Stanton on the Walls. Uh, this particular engine, gas going from Banbury in Oxfordshire. Uh, Tom converted it from a road locomotive into a showman's engine. And it's been with uh, Team Mill Band for quite a while now. Uh, well looked after, well cleaned. It's 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 back back track it. then. Yeah. Really steerable, they come up so close with that big bad engine. On a first time appearance here at Stephen Country Show, we have this Avon and Porter Steamroller, owned by Mr. Jones from Hereford. It's an engine. Will, will. Hey, I didn't, I didn't hear that. This is Will Dakin from Goosery in Cheshire, making a return appearance here with this uh, David Paxman traction engine. David Paxman built the traction engines. Well, steam vehicles at Colchester in Essex. This one actually worked in Cornwall. Uh, it's been in the Dakin family for quite a while now. You, I say Cornwall because it's got the registration of AF on it. Davy Paxman, Trempston Steam and Country Show. We have this Avon and Porter Steamroller, owned by Mr. Jones from Hereford. Its works number is 10997. Uh, this one actually worked on the Lockings Estate in Berkshire. And it uh, came into preservation in the sort of 1960s, and at one time it was uh, owned and rallied around Oxford. Steam vehicle on display here this weekend. This is Sentinel's last design of the steam lorry. Sentinel's built their machines at uh, uh, Shrewsbury. And uh, this is an example of an S4 as late as 1933. It's actually worked for Rainfords in the Liverpool area. It's been in the Williamson family now since the very early days of preservation. And it's been driven for us this weekend by Mr Massey. It's travelled on the road from its base. So you could reliably do sort of the Sentinel. Mark Woodbine from Chesterfield next with a Burrow steamroller that actually worked for Isaac Ball uh, of Walls in Lancashire. They were big contractors up that way. Uh, just purchased a few years back by uh, Malt from the uh, Preston area. Steam roller. Long Ashton Rural District Council, Somerset. in uh, down south in Somerset area it's been in the uh, Dockery ownership for quite a number of years now and over the last few years has received a major rebuild Crampton family following on with the Wallace and Stevens advanced steamroller. This one actually worked for Chichester Council in Sussex. Uh, this is sort of like a 10 ton example. It's fitted with what at the time was uh, a good invention for the steam vehicle. It's got duplex cylinders quartered crank and that allows it to do a quick swift reverse and I think if we get in the clear it'll give us a whereas the, the older steam rollers were had to stop to change gear from forward to reverse and it left a ridge in the tarmac a little six ton example now owned by Barry and Mary Johnson of Kegworth this one's called Winifred George for sale uh, it was acquired by Barry and Mary from the sale in 1980 and over the last few years it's received a complete rebuild, boiler, firebox, etc. and it's been put onto rubber tyres to give it a little better ride. And Lou Young Charlie's driving it for us today. Owned by ANG Morrison from Cheshire. Uh, this actually went new 
to uh, contractors in South Africa. It's been repatriated into this country. 17071 is the maker's number. Avelin and Port Attraction Engine, one of the earliest ones, uh, went new to William Townsend of Falcon in East Yorkshire. It's owned by the 1995 Association. Good afternoon, Ed. Of a road locomotive that they built, but it, the work was actually carried out by Garrett's of Lyston in Suffolk. And this one went new, as you can see from the legend on the canopy top, to a Mr. C. Singerton, who was a contractor from Rackenford. Uh, it was actually supplied by a firm called Stenner and Gum to Mr. Singleton. It's had a number of owners in preservation, and one of those was the steamroller now, owned by Pete Jacobs from Swad Pete and Emma Jacobs from Swaddling Coat. This one was built as late as 1946, went new to Baines, who were contractors. It was in the uh, playground, all painted up with kids' faces, etc. Uh, it was rescued from there by a gentleman from North Derbyshire called Phil Helliwell. Uh, Phil kept it for a while but never did nothing with it. It had another owner, John Wood from Wiseswold. Uh, it finished up at Long Watton where a little was done to it, taking it apart. Uh, it was stood in a shed, unused. The actual fire was still in it. Uh, the actual ashes from the fire was still in it. Uh, when it was rescued by the, the, the Baines and Jacobs family for restoration. So, you never know, perhaps a few years' time we'll see that one back out. It's a uh, debut at the Remston Steam and Country Show. One, it's got a feast crane on the back, look, ladies and gentlemen. It's a scenic showman's engine. You'll notice behind the main dynamo, just behind the chimney, there's a bracket with another dynamo on. Signifies it's a scenic showman's engine. And there's a feast crane on the back there with a, for putting the fare up. When they're at fair to fair. Now we have a pair of engines from Robert Tyler. T3 type tractors. Mr. Blower is the first one. This one actually worked in the Dunster Castle area of Somerset. Um, Owned for a number of years by one John Connor, whose name we've already mentioned this afternoon with the Big Fowler Road locomotive. But John Connor uh, put a top speed on it, and uh, I know one of our late preservationists told me that uh, he steered that engine when it was in top gear, and uh, it was a bit of a hair raising experience. Department, but the order was cancelled, and it passed to a Mr. C. H. Johnson of Ripon in Yorkshire. Uh, it's been with John Carr since the late 1960s. And I think, oh no, we've got Pentel and Queen next. And they still keep coming. Pentel and Queen, a Fowler Roller. Owned by Russell Inman from Shire Oaks. Uh, this one actually worked on the Pentland Hills up there in Scotland, there just south of Edinburgh. Uh, Kane, please. Uh, Ian Jenner. Oh, Ian, what's this example then? It's a nine-inch scale control road loco. Nine-inch scale borough road loco, there you are. So not only do they build them, this is, this is nine-inch scale, so. A bit like a little borough engine that we knew once called Cock of the North that was owned by Jack Wakefield. Right, just whoa, 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 Right. Right, we've got B48, which is a six inch Ruston and Proctor, and it's owned by Mr. RQ. Thank you. 44 is a 6 inch David Brown Cropmaster tractor owned by A Dawes. I must just stop this one. This is Mr. Brian Wright with a nice little Foster engine. Good afternoon, Brian. Son. Good afternoon. Good afternoon, Peter. I must buy my new hearing aid. You can't hear very well. I'm just going to have a quick word. Right 
Thank you. Very good. I and C. Clipston next with a Foden steam lorry called Penny. And on the back, Boris. Hey, uh, you'll get into trouble, you. Well, or you'll get me into trouble. Boris. Right now, this looks like a blowing engine, number 16. It's a four inch Fowler blowing engine owned by G. Taylor. Well done. Are you alright boys? Right, it's not bad for a B17. It's a Garrett 4 inch traction engine owned by Ive Bun. B8. A 3 inch Fowler R3 Fowler Showman's engine R and J Smith. Based on the Iron Maiden, the large showman's engine that uh, is at Scarborough Fair collection of Graham Atkinson's in G.C. Satchwell. Six. This is like the lottery, isn't it? Number six, a three-inch Elgin traction engine. All prime. Four and a half inch burrow. 46. Six inch task, a little giant tractor. A. Wilson. Well, good afternoon. I know this gentleman, Errol. A B2, it's an Atkinson, a 3 inch Atkinson under tight steam wagon. Are you alright, Errol? Have we got it running again? You're in full steam now again, are you? H. Lost a traction engine. H. Cleal. Thank you. Very good, Dan. Yeah, we've got the lady. Operating, are we under instruction here, I think? But we seem to be making a good job of it. Now, a Fowler Showman's engine, B32. It's an R3 type Showman's engine, owned by J. Ives. This looks the business. Very good, very nice, complete with trading in all to get a ride round on that, didn't I? Oh, I want to jump in, I wish I could. I've jumped into this job and I can't get out of it. I've had about 24 years of it. B30. It's a four inch burrow traction engine. B Roberts. Yeah, then. B7. It's a three inch file traction engine. B Fussell. 36. 36 is a four and a half inch burrow traction engine. G Witham. Called Elizabeth. And I bet that's the wife's name, isn't it? Are you taking the kids on the way round? I'll just stop this one. Rose. Right. I know this one, it's a foster. Vicky Marsa. Alright, Vicky. Good. I'm alright, thank you, but don't yeah, Vicky used to be the treasurer of the show. For many, many years. 20 years, she said. B35 is a four and a half inch Foden C type wagon. B Western. 47 is a six inch Savage, little Samson. Owned by C Webb. For the second. J. Bruce with a, a four inch Foster. Nice to see the happy and smiling faces once again. 19 is a four inch McLaren road locomotive. C. Smith. We're into the other. Members of the Wide Awake Club will have noticed that we've had the arena shortened this year to get everything in with the show. It's we seem to have had two years off or whatever and it seems to have got bigger and bigger so but that's a good thing and 